This video is sponsored by Playster, the first all-in-one entertainment app. Totally Awesome Hulk has been a totally awesome series thus far, but when you start throwing BB ball boys into my comic books, no, no, get them out of here. Hello and welcome to the show with the views. I'm Orem, and we're gonna we're gonna review comics. We we do it a lot. This one's sponsored by Playster. It's a good time. Let's get started. All right, Totally Awesome Hulk number 13. Th this issue was fine. It's not as stellar as the rest of the series has proved that it could be, but it also wasn't awful. There was one big thing that I wanted to talk about here, and it is Jeremy Lin showing up in this book. For those that don't know, Jeremy Lin is a real-life professional NBA player. To me, it just seems very shoehorned, weird, out of place. He just kind of shows up apropos of nothing and is now a character in this two-issue arc of this comic, which is just a very weird tonal shift for this book. It's been kind of serious and hitting on actual subjects for a while, and then suddenly Jeremy Lin shows up. I'm fine with wacky stuff like this for annuals or holiday specials and stuff like that, but when we're hot off the heels of two big arcs dealing with very serious psychological type stuff, it's just bizarre. It almost feels like someone else is writing it, which is not the case as far as I know. Another thing like this happened in Ant-Man when Paul Shear showed up, which was a little better because Ant-Man is more of a comedy book, but it was still weird there. It was almost Uncanny Valley. All in all, this wasn't an awful issue. The guest star just spells all kinds of concerns for me personally. Maybe I'll make an issues about this subject at some point. I don't know. Now we got more Hulk stuff. Hulk number two is the She-Hulk book, but it's called Hulk now. But she's still called She-Hulk. I don't know, it's weird. It's just publication confusion that doesn't need to exist. But anyway, that's not the point. This issue was great. First off, I wanted to address the writer and just the creators behind this. I haven't heard of them before, and they might be like super secret stellar people that I just haven't read anything by, but... Normally Marvel, especially lately, has been doling out their creators, just the same creators on certain new books, but these two people, or three people, or however many people are creating this book, they're great. Either way, the writing and especially the art were both fantastic here. The art kind of has a stylized anime thing going on without it being too obnoxious and just you can't tell what's going on. It, it looks good here. Something I specifically wanted to call out on the writing side was how they show Jen's almost transformations into She-Hulk. It made me both scared for her, her surroundings, and made me all around nervous, which is good because that's how I should feel in this situation because that's how she feels in this situation. They just do a really good job of making Jen feel relatable, and they did it in such a short time. This is only issue two, and I feel very attached to her, and I don't read that much She-Hulk, so... Good job, guys. Okay, finally time for Venom, and this was a surprising hit. I went into this series almost blind, because I haven't really been keeping up with Venom's current state of affairs since he joined the Guardians, and I didn't even really read any of that. I just knew that Agent Venom was on Guardians, and they figured out all this stuff about his alien heritage and all that kind of stuff, but I saw this book, and it looked like Eddie Brock Venom on the cover instead of Flash Thompson, and I was like, what? What's going on? So the new Venom is named Lee. I don't think we know much about him. I'm pretty sure he's a new character. He's one edgy boy, which is great because, I mean, look at Venom. He just screams edgelord. He, he literally screams. I just think it's a good fit, especially with the new juxtaposition they're going with where Venom wants to be a good guy, but the host doesn't. And they play with that in this issue. You have the little black thought boxes, which you think by reading this the first time are Lee's thoughts, but they're actually the Venom symbiote's thoughts once that reveal happens and it switches on you and you're like, whoa, the, the symbiote's been talking this whole time, not edgy boy Magoo. This book just seems to be promising a super interesting dynamic for Venom, something we haven't seen in a while, I think. Who knows? I'm definitely gonna keep reading. But those are all the reviews that I have for you this week. I do wanna ask you a question though. Should real life people make cameos in comic books? And if so, is context and tone of the book important? Let's talk about all that in the comments. And once again, this video is brought to you by Playster. They are the world's first all-in-one entertainment app. They've got all kinds of stuff. They've got a bunch of comics. They've got a lot of audiobooks, which is what I've heard is like the best part of that. They're coming up with their games and stuff too. They've got fun little games you can play and it's pretty cheap. You can get an unlimited subscription to their book, audiobook, and comic book selection for just $9.95 a month. 
Playster has actually hooked you guys up with some pretty sweet deals here. If you go to the link in the description, you can start your free 30-day trial, or until March 3rd, you can start your first month, enter the code ORUM90, and get 90 days for free. Other than that, be sure to leave a like on your way out, and as always, thank you so much for watching. Next time, we're probably talking about comics. Again. 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 Oh.